Hey everybody, this is an extra tutorial number 2. In this video, I will be discussing lists, tuples and the concept of mutable and immutable objects. So let's recall lists. A list is a collection of items or you can say elements. You can have different types of elements in a list. We can have a list of integers. We can also have a list of strings. We can have different types of elements in a list. For example, here we have integers, strings and floats, all three types inside the same list. We can have different types of objects inside a list. Consider this. In this example, we have two tuples inside the same list. Consider another example. This is a list with dict objects. We can also have different types of objects inside the same lists. Like in this example, we have a dict, a tuple and an integer all inside the same list. We can also have one list inside the other. These are known as nested lists. For example, here we have two lists each inside the same list C. Now let's have a quick look at list indexing and slicing. This is very similar to string indexing and slicing as I discussed in ET1. Consider A. A of 0 will give us the 0th element that is 1. A of 5 will give us the 5th element that is 6. We can also use negative indexing. A of minus 2 will give me the second element from the end that is 6. We can also slice list. This will produce a new list with the slice elements. If I want to just get the first three elements of the list, I will say I have to start from the beginning. So I will just add a colon without specifying the starting index explicitly. I have to go till 3 which is at index 2. So I will say 2 plus 1 just as we did for strings. This will give us a new list consisting of these three elements. We can skip elements while slicing in lists too. Here also we will use double colons inside the square brackets. If I say a colon colon 2, this will give us a list containing every second element of the list a. If I say a colon 3 colon 2, this will give a list containing every second element of the sliced list of three elements. Now consider a list of objects. Now, in this list, if I say a0, this will return me the first element of the list, that is a dictionary. So a of 0 as a whole refers to this dictionary. If I say a0, 1, this means my key for the dictionary is 1. This will return Tom. Similarly, if I say a of 3, this will refer to the list at index 3. If I want to obtain the 2 from the nested list, I can say a of 3 and minus 1 as 2 is the last element. Now let's talk about a few important list methods. Let's have a quick look at the available methods. New objects are added at the end of a list. For this, we have methods like append and extend. Count gives the occurrences of a value in the list. Insert is used to insert an object at a particular position in a list. Then we have pop and remove. These are used for deleting the elements inside a list. Reverse and sort are for manipulating the data inside a list. These methods do not return anything. These are used for sorting and reversing correspondingly. So suppose we have a equals to 1, 2, 3, 4 as a list. We wish to add a single element to it. We will say a dot append 5. Now new list becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now we wish to extend this list by adding more than one element. For this we will say a dot extend and we have to enter these values in a list. So if we wish to pick out the last element from this list, we will say a dot pop and now the new list does not have an 8. If we want to reverse the order of this list, we will say a dot reverse. You can see that a dot reverse did not return us a new list, rather it made changes to the existing list a. Before going forward to tuples and dicts, let's see what exactly does mutable or immutable objects mean. Mutable objects are those whose value we can change at any point of time 
while immutable objects are its inverse. Once we have defined them, we cannot change them. We can see we started as a list of four elements. Then we used the append method to add a five to the list. This did not return us a new reference of this list rather our original list was mutated. The same goes for extend, pop and reverse. This means we were able to change our original list and thus list comes under the category of mutable objects. Now let's discuss tuples. Tuples are lists that are immutable. We can use tuples just like lists while defining them. They can have different object types. They can be sliced and indexed just like lists. But we cannot mutate tuples. That is, no addition, removal, updation of values inside a tuple is possible. Consider this tuple. This tuple contains a list, integers, a dictionary as well as another tuple inside it. We can say A01. This gives us the two at, that is inside the list at the zeroth element. We can also say A23 plus 1. This will give us the two objects as a tuple, one is the int at the second index and the dictionary at the third index. We can also skip objects by using double colons. This will give us the every second element of the tuple starting from the zeroth index. The importance of tuples is that using this, the position of our elements remains intact. Hence, this is a great structure for storing the coordinates. Consider a tuple A equals to 1, 2, 3. We can consider these as three coordinates x, y and z in a three-dimensional coordinate geometry. Strings are also immutable. Consider a equals to aggravate. We can't change this original aggravate to any other value. If we want to replace the g's by b, we can say a dot replace g by a b. You can see that this returns a new string object and the object A remains intact. So that's it for this tutorial. Hope you liked it. In the next tutorial I will discuss dicts and the concept of aliasing. You can write to us for any doubts or feedback. Thanks for watching.